Hi there, we are Sue and Mark from Art Journey and Miles, and these are our friends Brian and Linda, and of course, can't forget Willow. We're back in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin right now, and we've been hanging out with these guys a long time, and we've kind of hooked up along the way a lot throughout the country. They surprised us by saying they're thinking of getting a different RV. This is their third one, and they're thinking of getting a different RV because Life is changing for them. So stick with us and let's find out why all the changes. Good morning. We're here in what park are we in? Bigfoot Big Beach, Beach State, State Park. Park. Exactly, Bigfoot Beach, Beach State Park in, in uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, and since we're not campers, we're tourists, we love when Brian and Linda invite us so that we can actually use a grill and have great food and be amongst the trees. But we're also taking advantage of them for the second time here because if you've been with our on our channel any amount of time, you can uh, scroll back and see the episode we did with these guys when they did work camping. And it was a real popular subject. And you know what? As luck would have it, we got a really popular subject right now that they're thinking about, thinking about, thinking about. And when you get to that level to finally be thinking about, that's pretty serious. And the serious subject today is gonna to be possibly changing once again to a different style of RVing as their uh, evolution of their RVing career has happened. Uh, I'll stop talking in one second. I'll tell you what our uh, RVing style is. Sue and I, back in 2017, June of 2017, uh, sold our home because we loved our home, we loved our friends in the community, but it was in too cold of a climate. So we totally cashed out, uh, bought the uh, 2014 Newmar Dutch Star that we've been full timing in since then, and we love it, and we got extremely lucky because it was pretty much exactly what we still love yeah. to be in. We identified very early that we were tourists and not campers. And by being a tourist that drives around in an RV, you end up camping just by mistake. And that level of camping for us is good enough. And so uh, we're pretty happy with that. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you had, mm. uh, you know, that got you to this point. Brian, Linda, Willow, oh. <laughs> Sue, and Ted. Uh, Mark. Well, I don't know. Mark had set us up that he might be asking this, so I've been thinking about it. I think uh, in the hind you know, there's a lot of hindsight going on in our life all these years. Yeah. And, but we do see when you read the forums, it's not uncommon at all for people like us um, to change. I mean, it's very common. Four or five yeah. rigs over a number of years yeah. is we, very common. We were amazed, actually, once we got out there. And we're kind of like one and done, we hope. Yeah. But we were amazed on how many people actually say, yeah, I just uh, got a new one this year. This is my fifth. And we're like, wow, I, I guess I never thought it was like that. But you guys are experiencing that. Right. And let me preface that, that <clears throat> I think a lot of people, they fall into that trap because they're okay with just thinking about their rig and their RV in terms of their current payment. And you go into any RV place, and they'll love to put you into that super duper rig for eighteen dollars a month more, or twenty six dollars. And these guys have been doing it the responsible way, where literally almost everything that they've been driving or with, they've either had no payments or very little payments. Right? Like, do you have payments on these this rig right yeah. now? Yeah. So they're. And Brian's been very careful to be able to buy things that were in extremely good shape. He takes extremely good care of everything. So when they sell it, they either lose nothing or make money. And that is one of the only small handful of reasons yeah. why I hate Brian. Okay? <laughs> because I, we can never do that. <laughs> well, it's, it's different. You're trying to match up our vision, our financial means and what we want, and then me being almost as anal and analytical as Mark, <laughs> trying to figure out what's going to make sense within those parameters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Problem is our vision over the years hasn't always matched up to 
our ability. I mm -hmm. mean, to do what you do, we need to do, like your good friend Cindy, we need a 450 dually yeah. in a full-time living fifth wheel mm -hmm. to travel like we thought we were going to do at the beginning. We thought our, yeah. our Class C would be able to do that. But it was a smaller Class C, you know, as I called it a Super B, or was an Itasca Cambria. Mm -hmm. And it was an, it was comfortable, but it wasn't roomy inside, it, you know, the layout. Yeah. And a lot of things we've learned. Okay, what did we learn? And we didn't want to tow a car at the time. Yeah. It was already taken care of three cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that means changing another car to, that was towable. But we weren't going far enough that we needed it, but it was enough when we got places getting my bikes off the back, towing the kayak around, where do you store it? Mm. The shower was filled with storage. But we learned a lot that we can only do X in it, mm. and we enjoyed it, but then we wanted more freedom of yeah. a vehicle uh, and stay longer with a little more room. So, right, and I think that you guys have done it the way <clears throat> I would always recommend people to do it, that if you can afford your home base, if you love where you're living, if you love the setup you have, uh, keep it you know this this uh, fantasy of selling it all and and going full-time and everything that's for such a small segment of people you have to be married to the right person it has to be the right time in your life you have to have a good backup plan so you can get back into let's call it the normal life so I think uh, the way you guys have been doing it uh, they have a really nice place that has the minimal amount of maintenance because they live in a condo community that's kind of high end, and so which they, limits our ability to have it at next door to our house. Right, right. we can't right. park it in the driveway. Right. We can't park it next door. So now you're dealing with storage. So right. that all came into our thinking. Right, where are we going to store? Where are we going to put it? How are we going to work on? It? Yeah, you know, when I because RVing takes work. Yeah. You better be able to do minor things because I'm always down there every yeah. spring and winter. And we had some, this is our inaugural cruise of the year. Yeah. And we've had some bumps yeah. that we found when we got here. That is a recommendation we have. Always do an inaugural <laughs> time because you find out all little things, yeah. things that happen. Right. We're only an hour away from our home. So right if something now. happens, it's not the worst case scenario to get something towed or go get something. Yeah. We're not going to take our first trip five hours out into the stick yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Okay, Plan. so when you first started, you started with the, let's call it, uh, it, it was a Class C. Class right. C. Okay, so they started with a Class C, and they were not towing, and you had that how long? A couple of years. Two years. <clears throat> wow, that, that went by like that. Yeah. And yeah. We drove it all around a lot on ferry boats. It took it to yeah, Ireland. Took it to Madeline we Island. Really enjoyed it. Wow. The ferry. Yeah. So then, when you sold that, you made money on that. So about even. About okay, even. so they there was a washout on that. Now you did with the ninja with miles. So, so yeah. what what did you buy after that? Then we bought a we we had again our vision doesn't always match up yeah. to everything that we balancing the vision and the pocketbook. We thought we wanted more extended stay places. We uh. could travel farther with this on paper we bought this 33 foot sunset trail reserve okay trailer trailer travel trailer travel oh, trailer. okay a bumper pull a bumper yes. pull as people like to call okay. it okay and with a long hitch because we put on the pro pride hitch yeah. on paper we had then got an f-150 pickup that said it should tow yeah. and on paper it does tow yeah but you're dealing with almost 36 feet behind the truck yeah when you're done Pulling yeah. it by a, a, a one quarter, okay. I mean a half ton truck. Yeah. So we, you know, we would need a six hour video to talk about yeah. proper truck sizing. Right. But I can why tell you this: change, though, right? Right. Why we as an ex mechanical engineer that's retired now, I can tell you that there's there's the specifications and there's how everything works out on the calculation sheets, and then there's the reality. So when you figure out what will end up towing it, go up a truck size, and you might be good. So then, after the bumper pull experience, you did you keep the same truck and go to a fifth wheel, or did you switch trucks and trailers? We switched trucks while we still had that trailer, and it pulled much better. Okay, so you but went from a 150 to a 250? 250, 250, to a 2500 right. gram. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. But it, so it was wonderful, but the trailer itself was still too big for what we were using it for. Yeah. Backing up, we weren't retired yet. Yes. During these things, so we oh, had yeah. visions of getting ready for it. Yeah. So in the meantime, we're trying to use a 
36 foot long trailer for camping. Yeah, yeah for, for weekend warrior. State campgrounds, mm. we're amazed some of the places we got it in and out. We yeah. were simply amazed when people wow. look at it and go, and I say, how am I going to get it out of here? You know. <laughs> so was that trailer physically longer than oh, this? Oh, yeah, much. Yes. Plus, it's behind the truck. Oh, plus right. the hitch. Really? Yeah. yeah. So that was Why don't long. I remember that trailer that well? So it was long. huge. And it was beautiful inside. I mean, yeah. you yes. could live in this trailer. The bathroom was small, yeah. but the rest of it was just huge. You had Very the biggest nice. kitchen and cabinet space. Yeah, yeah. And I, I said, I can't pull it anymore with a half ton. Yeah. Got the three-quarter ton. And then I realized... Well, now I have a three-quarter ton. Yeah. That's fifth wheel compatible. Okay, so how long so did you keep everything? that one? Two years. Two years. <laughs> Two years. There's a pattern here. There is. Okay. Yeah. So now you have, what's this make and model? Jayco Eagle. A Jayco Eagle. And how, and how long have you had this one? Two years. Two years. Okay, <laughs> folks. That's it. It's called, it's how called, many years it's do called you two go year between. ADD. Yeah. 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 ADD, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I want to throw this out here. Uh, <laughs> Brian ended up buying his first class C <clears throat> during the time period me and Sue were thinking about what we were going to do. And so, like, he just catapulted past us. But I remember when you bought that, some of the rigs that you were looking at, you specifically liked and looked at a Pierce Arrow, Pierce class A. So when are you going to come full circle and just say, <laughs> the hell with it, and get a class A? Well, after watching our journey in miles a few years, <laughs> it, that's, again... We're not full timers, yeah. and it's not in our pocketbook because no. we have a home, yeah. yeah. No, you know, it, and we're not going to get rid of our home, yeah. As of now, anyway. So we just have to figure out if I give anybody any advice, is figure out what you really want to do, yeah. And because we've changed now, we're retired. Yes, yeah. that's kind of. The I work part time in a park because yeah. I love all this stuff. Do you want to host? Do you want to camp? Or do you want to be tourists? Tourists. Yeah. And be honest, it's our living vicariously your life watching your show yeah we want to do more of that but we can't yeah. do it full time but yeah. we want to do more of it mm -hmm. so well, we want to base ourselves some places yep. and then drive around comfortably I, I to can't, visit all these places we want to see yeah. i can't tell you how many times we go to a place that's beautiful a lot of things to do really civilized really classy and there'll be lots of camp hosts and we're like Oh my God, Brian and Linda should be doing this. Case in point, remember how many hosts there were at Borrego Springs State Park in California? And that's where this <clears throat> might would stay in the picture if yeah. that's what you want to do. Yeah. But right. camp hosting requires you, they don't want short term camp hosts. Right. right. Some yeah. of them I've seen as long as six months, yeah. usually a minimum of a month. Yeah. And yeah. we weren't committing, we weren't able to commit to all those things. Yeah. We could be fill ins here and there. Yeah. But we're trying to decide using all of our experience. Visiting you around the country when you guys are doing your yeah. thing, doing what we did in Florida when we rent Airbnbs, mm -hmm. and what we do here now camping. It's getting harder for me to climb underneath yeah. and put batteries underneath the fifth wheel. Yeah. We, we still want our bikes. We love our but heavy e-bikes, yeah. mm -hmm. but look at the height of my trailer back there. Yeah. That's where the bikes would be up on that rack. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'd be lifting above my head to take them yeah. down. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah. want our kayak, but it's I'm way up in front of my pickup, and it's over 60 pounds to get it out and yeah. inflate it and all that. Yeah. We want something where we can tour parts of the country, be comfortable. I go up a ramp, maybe. This is an idea, yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know. But we're still working that out. It's great sitting around the fire last time. We talked back and forth all the things we'd like to do, yeah. and how you do we want to do it. I don't want to camp full time anymore. Yeah, because it's just getting, you know, a little harder. Well, what you have to, to do, do is you have to get friends and you go visit them like we do. Yeah, and we do. <laughs> Don't okay. lose your camping. Yeah. And you get your picture. <laughs> okay, we're all done camping. All right, right. so we, we're not, we, but yeah. we don't want to give up camping. Yeah. Totally. If we could pull yeah. into a KOA one night instead of a right. hotel, which we right. hate, yeah. when we drive our cars like the Florida or every, yeah. we hate especially with our little one here. Yeah. Finding yeah. a place that's dog friendly. Pull in. We don't want to spend a fortune for because we haven't been a safe, nice place. Because all we do is pull in and sleep. Yeah. We don't want to pull in between all the diesel trucks at a rest stop. Yeah. yeah. So we thought, how can we go? Because okay. out to South Dakota, oh, we're right. only paying like 45, 50 bucks at those places right. to yeah. pull in, yeah. which is a lot cheaper than the crummy seventy-five, eighty-five, hundred-dollar hotels oh, yeah, we're yeah. paying. Right. And Absolutely. we hate we're yeah. going out and getting some fast food and sitting on a bed, yeah. Yeah. waiting yeah. for the morning. The waiting call. for the morning. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. we'd rather be able to pull up. We don't want to be campers in the KOE, but yeah. we can pull into something. And again, we some county parks are just as nice yeah. for a lot less. 
you know, on the way to South Dakota and back. We stayed in a county park. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. We pull in, put our chairs out. Yeah. We can sit outside for the evening without worrying about sitting on a hotel bed. Right. You know, and then in the morning, no big deal. We're not unhooking our fifth wheels and doing all that stuff. We're just keep it hooked up. When, when we, but yeah. your harvest host shows are great, and we want to be able to do more than that. Yeah, we want to be yeah. self-contained. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a hybrid vehicle. We're in a three-quarter ton truck with a light fifth wheel, so it limits me. I know a lot of people out there pull way over their weights. Yeah, I don't like doing that. Yeah, I'm. I drive. You know, slower speed. We just put on new Goodyear endurance Tires. to be safe, but we can't be fully self-contained. I tried to pick up. You know, I'd love to have better, bigger, better batteries. Mm -hmm. I can't get under there to put them in. I don't have the beautiful slide-out trays. Yeah. yeah, you have to. I have to climb underneath the overhang of the fifth wheel in a little narrow box. Yeah, lift it up and shove them in there, and then hook them all up with no room. Yeah, I, that's. I want to be more self-contained for short periods, so we want to pull in the harvest host that night. Yeah. I can, I have the power There is to a pull. solution to your battery problem. If you pull this magic thing out. <laughs> yeah. and, Don't show your credit cards. And, you, and you, you pay somebody, you go, okay, put the batteries in for me because I can't do it, you know, and you just keep pulling them out yeah. until they finally get it done. You know? But we winterize ourselves. We de-winterize. Yeah. Yes. As long as we're going to live here, and we, for a while right. we think we were, that may change too. Right. We winterize right now, by leaving. Right. We live for a whole month in the <laughs> south. <laughs> well, we'd have to take all our batteries out. That was another thing when you had an RV, mm -hmm. I mean a motorhome. I was taking out all the house batteries and the motor and the truck battery. Wow. Because I stored yeah. it and locked it up for six months. And wow. there was no, because yeah. it wasn't at my house where I could plug yeah. it in. It was at a storage lot. So yeah. now I'm hauling those batteries out and storing those in the house and charging up three batteries. Right. And this is, and you're storing, you know, you don't have to say the city, but it's in Wisconsin, southern ish uh, yeah. center southern wisconsin and what's it costing you per month to well store? we got an extra big space yeah so outdoors it's storage. outdoors storage yeah is 90 bucks a month okay so that's nothing that's a you know i mean we well, it was 75 but we went to a bigger space so i yeah. i could put all my slide outs out oh, in the spring okay. and we yeah. can and clean and, and we work do on cover it, it. we, we have a cover, cover so we cover it all winter yeah so that yeah. okay that does so we didn't talk about this, so we, you're hearing it when we hear it. At this point in the conversation that you guys had that we weren't able to contribute to, what are you thinking if you had a gun to your head and you had to blurt out what's going to be your next rig and setup? What's it going to be? Well, we don't know. I mean, Can I stay? Sure. Okay, sure. So here we were talking last night around the campfire, and we're trying to make things easier. So if we got a small toy hauler, Mm -hmm. small that we could pull either behind the truck or get a smaller truck or an SUV and with the back that comes down that we could wheel our bikes, bikes in yeah, and we could just wheel the kayak, the kayak hard in, shell kayaks you know and just up, you know. Yeah. the ease and we can deal with a smaller living space if we're only tourists and we're yeah. just yeah. going around yeah I mean we yeah. could even if we knew we were going to be somewhere for a few weeks we could do an Airbnb if yeah. we really wanted more room yeah or something well, that's like that, hope. or go yeah. stay with relatives. Yeah. We fortunately have relatives in Florida. We have North relatives Carolina. in right. North yeah. Carolina. California. We have relatives in California. So we could, you know, just use it as a means to get to places. So how how much smaller do they make fifth wheels? I mean, we've seen some really small ones, but they weren't toy with, haulers. With actually. a toy hauler, yeah. yeah. That oh, is a toy if you go to a fifth wheel toy hauler, that's probably the smallest might be what we have now. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Toy haulers and fifth wheels are very popular. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but again, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. Yes. I had to change my whole suspension system yeah. to make the trailer level. Again, this is a hybrid setup we have. <laughs> this isn't optimum for big long-term travel because it's a light. So it acts like a light. Mm -hmm. It's not rigid enough. It doesn't yeah. have the big frames and, and things. And... Uh, the truck is thing. I mean, if you're going to do heavy duty touring around the country, I think you need more of this. But this is too much for camping. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going to okay. camp someplace for a month, like a host in a state park, then that's mm -hmm. okay. Right. But it's it's not quite robust enough for big travel. Not, but it's too much for just doing what we're doing here. Right. Because uh, once I set up the amount of work it takes me to set up, and every year we do like to go to a great campground in Wisconsin, we stay two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. Once we're set up, it's great. Wonderful. 
but we're not seeing the country like our original plan when I looked at that that Class A many years ago because yeah. our plan was take off. Yeah. And we still don't want to give up that that dream. dream. Again, watching you know your channel tells us we want to do that, and we still want to take. We love our e-bikes. Yeah. We want to find the best neat trails around the country. Yeah. Kind of like the Nicholson Trail oh, was yeah. so cool. Was right. so the ones cool. I saw you guys do in Lake Tahoe. Oh, we want to experience yeah. that. We mm. still don't want to give up our kayaking. We will make it, but we want to keep it. We're at a point in our life we want to simplify it. Uh, the Class A with a tow. Even a small Class A in a tow drive vehicle still leaves me with the issue of our e-bikes and our kayaks yeah. Yeah. and lifting them up or storing them somehow. Yeah. Now, yeah. if I don't have a tow vehicle, I know there's racks on the back of Class A's that people put right. motorcycles even. But when we travel, they're exposed. You yeah. guys have that great little garage you have. Yeah. Yeah. But that was yeah. unique. You guys yeah. figured out a way to do it that's very unique. Yeah. And, and so you. what Brian's alluding to is we carry our e-bikes in the back of our Honda minivan, which technically we're not supposed to be pulling, but there were people much smarter than me that figured out that that transmission and that engine arrangement up till that year and model that we're pulling was still the same as way back in 2004 when Honda did say you could pull it and we took a chance and so far knock on wood everything's been working out um, i have to say we don't recommend it though we got lucky mark did the research and we're at the the highest trim right now and after that if anything happens to our minivan we're not sure what we're going to do to uh get our bikes around so i just want to put a disclaimer like well, mark and sue said you can do it like, no we're not we researched we did our homework and we got lucky you know what you guys are trying to do is i think similar to the same struggle that rv love had and rv love has went uh all over the place on all sorts of different rigs that they've had in the past and the biggest one they had was when for about two years the magic two years they had a class a country coach that they completely remodeled they had an excellent series of like six or eight videos yeah, where they just gutted this thing and they completely rebuilt the whole inside of it but right now as we speak they have um i think they have a class a very small class c diesel and they pull uh their jeep with it and they have bicycles that somehow they fash fashion on there huh. you know there literally is no perfect solution and you can get close to it but you can't ring the bell apparently there's just too many things involved costs weight, wow. size yeah. maneuverability uh, you, you uh, I kind of think the big takeaways here I think are first of all if you want to do this lifestyle start where you can start if you just do a, a, a trailer pull trailer that's what you can afford just to get out there and do it but i think mark and i were really fortunate because we were at retirement so we didn't go through the different phases like these guys they were working but still wanted to get out and now they're not working and they added to the family so the hotel thing isn't working yeah, yeah. but for mark and i we kind of started at we retired we knew what we wanted to do which was see the country as tourists and we knew we wanted to be comfortable so that's why we sat in many and we knew what we could afford and we bought basically bought our condo on wheels whereas a lot of people that um we see that are switching out it's for a very good reason like you guys love camby we love camby their first uh class c was it yes mm -hmm. it was awesome they went a lot of places you gotta say what camby was yeah camby what is was camby is a itasca cambria yeah. yeah tasca cambria yeah. And it was like Made one of the winnipeg <laughs> one of the classiest class nice. C's yeah. i've ever seen that it, was, it was nice but like and it took them a lot of places but i as you said it just wasn't enough room okay there now you, now you're switching okay we know what we want more room you got it but something happened with the trailer didn't fit so now we've got the fifth wheel which is awesome and now life changes so it's like what do you want to do plan what do you want to do camping uh boondocking tourists whatever what can you afford at the time and then what's your lifestyle their lifestyle changed they're retired now they want to be tourists now too and actually was it um our other friends bob and joy are switching out too oh, yeah. because life yeah. changes 
But they, they Our did, life isn't changing. We're just going big. Yeah. Bob, Bob and Joy went from a really nice, pretty big Integra uh, Class C, about as nice, about nice. as long as you could get, you know, before it turns into something else. Bob's going to show us his uh, rig paint. He's he's storing it here. Yeah. Okay. Wow. National Indoor. He's storing it. It's right here. Wow. Wow. You're my best friend. <laughs> I've always wanted to know somebody that has a king here. Me too. Me too. Wait, wait, wait I, I thought you said it was white. Yeah, it's not over here. Oh, 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 this, this oh, one. Oh, oh, okay. oh my God. Now, before you go oh, in, this I is tell nice. You, just so you know, we do not have an emergency door in case there's a fire inside. Mm. We do have several fire extinguishers. I don't there think it will be up to your standard, though. Yeah, you, well, you know him we're, then. We're, we're actually doing, uh, we're going to do a, uh, a segment on Protang. We're getting Protang installed with it. Mm, ours so is actually a hybrid model. It's it's a, what makes it hybrid? It's 2021 for the coach, mm -hmm. and it's 2022 for the chassis. So we are wondering if you could share why you went from your Integra uh, Class C, and then you jumped into the Class A. What? We never thought that we would trade that one until, you know, we were just too freaking old to drive it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Us, you know, we had camping experience. We started out in a tent with two little babies, and we graduated to a tent camper, then didn't camp for a while, and had never even thought about RVing until COVID. We started watching something on TV about RVing and said, wow, that, that looks interesting. That looks like it could be fun, and so started looking and we haven't even seen youtube at that point um, yeah. and the class a for us at that point in time just seemed so big more, you know more than we needed yeah and when we found that class c it just seemed to us like it had everything in fact it did have everything i would say six months after we got the class c i found the uh one of those magazines where you know if you're selling your rv that's where you put it yeah for sale, yeah. I started flipping through it, and I saw he had turned down quite a few pages, and all of them were on Class A's. Uh -huh. <laughs> the last day of the show, we were walking, we had looked at this one again, we were walking away, and all of a sudden, I just had this epiphany. I said to Bob, if this is what you really want, we're 78 years old, we don't have time to chase dreams in the future. If this is what you want, yeah, I'm not going to block it anymore. I said, even if we own, if we enjoy it for a couple more years, five more years, whatever we've got, let's not waste it. And he said, really? And I said, absolutely. So when you guys went bigger, I know you said you liked the, having more space, but are you guys planning some longer trips out now? Yeah, this one, the longest trip we had done in the Class C was when we came to the hot air balloon show. You know, I mean, it was it was perfect. And at that moment, I said, you know what? We made the absolute right decision. And they were in the right place at the right time. They were at some type of a function where National Indoor was there and had a bunch of rigs out. And they're kind of on board with National Indoor. That's where they bought their Integra. That's where they store it. They and they ended up with... Um, a brand new holiday rambler and i think they went to a 38 foot diesel class a so to wrap up here i could say one other thing that brian had he's he's still got in the back of his mind maybe a uh truck camper and he may have totally discounted that i can tell you that we see very few truck campers in campgrounds and every once in a while we'll read that they're not allowed in certain of the more fancy places that's and you guys are documented campers, and you think you want a little bit more tourist thing. So I'm sure Brian is going to be deep diving on that. So you guys got any last words before <laughs> we wrap up? Yeah. You know, we've enjoyed it all. Yeah, yes, we have. Done. This is a great size yes. if you want to do something in between what we've talked about. Right. Yeah. It's, it's got a, a little island. It's got great room for two people. It, you know, it's got all the amenities, and we would miss that yes. if we're going to stay in it long term. Yeah. This is still a possibility. It just, at my our point in life, doing the things I need to do to set it up and yeah. disconnect it and pull in for a night. When yeah. I trip to South Dakota, I spent half my time just stopping at KOAs and disconnecting and pulling out yeah. and getting into the front hatch and pulling out all the stuff and doing all this. 
They're doing it all again the next day. Sagging with yeah. a pool of water. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll close that they did the inaugural dishwashing and they did the inaugural <laughs> shower. shower. Yeah. So I'm going to offer to do the inaugural bathroom black tank visit oh, Mark, right now. See ya. <laughs> well, bye, Mark. This is our segment. If you guys have any comments um, or advice, on, or tell us about your experience, all the different changes, if you went through them, Keep talking, honey. This is an action cam. <laughs> <laughs> if you've had this experience too, changing out your RV and your style, let us know. What made you change it? Was it a change in your life? Was it a change in what you desired and what you wanted to do? So Thanks for joining us. <laughs> until we see you on the road or in a campground someday. That's right. Check us out every Sunday for the next episode of Our Journey in Miles. And don't forget, it's Sue's 32nd birthday. Today. Oh my yes, God. Yes, it is my 32nd <laughs> birthday. Happy birthday, honey. Happy yeah. birthday, Sue. <laughs> See <ya>. very young. <laughs>